Module 4, Lesson 14, Homework. Number 1. Solve. Draw a rectangular fraction model to explain your thinking. A. 1 half of 2 thirds is 1 half of... Let's draw a picture first. So if we have half of 2 thirds, first I'm going to draw the 2 thirds that we have. So I'm going to shade in one third, two thirds. And if we have half of that, I'm going to split that in half. And shade in the half. What we have is one half of two thirds would be equal to one. 2 out of 6, which is equal to 1 third. B. We have 1 half of 4 thirds, which would be equal to 1 half of 4 thirds. So let's draw our 4 thirds first, and then we can find half of it. So I'm going to break this into thirds. There's 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, but we need four thirds. So I'm going to need to draw another hole, break it into thirds, and I'll shade in a fourth third. Now I want to take half of this. So I'm going to split the entire thing in half and shade in one of the halves. Now I can count how many pieces are overlapping or shaded in both red and blue. That would be one, two, three, four pieces out of a total in one whole because the de bottom of the fraction, the denominator, is always out of one whole. So in one whole, we have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So that's equal to 4 6 or 2 thirds. C, 1 third of 3 fifths. So I'm going to draw 3 fifths. There's my fifths. I'm going to shade in 3 of them. And then I want to take 1 third of that. So I'm going to split it into thirds. and we just want one of the thirds. So I'm going to shade in one third. So that is equal to, we have three overlapping out of a total pieces in the entire whole. It's three by five, so 15. So that's equal to three fifteenths. Or if we reduce that, equal to one-fifth. D, one-half of six-eighths. So I'm going to draw our six-eighths first. And I'll shade in six of them. And then we're going to take half of that, so split it in half, and shade in one half. So if we look closely, we have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces that are shaded in both blue and pink out of a total uh, it's 8 across and 2 down, six, so 8 times 2 is 16. So 6 sixteenths, or if we were to reduce that, we would get 3 eighths. E, 1 third times 4 fifths. Remember, times means of. So we're taking 1 third of 4 fifths. 
I'm going to shade in four fifths. And then split it into thirds. We're taking one third of it. So we have four overlapping out of a total 15 pieces and that can't be reduced so it's equal to 4 fifteenths. F. 4 fifths times 1 third or of 1 third. Split into thirds and shade in one third. Now the other way, I'm going to split it into fifths. And I'm going to shade in four fifths. We get four overlapping out of 15 total pieces, four fifteenths. Now notice E and F are the same problem. One third times four fifths is the same thing as four fifths times one third. We get the same answer, just our picture looks slightly different because of the way that the order in which we multiplied. So you can multiply either way based on the commutative property. Number two, Sarah has a photography blog. Three sevenths of her photos are nature. One fourth of the rest are her friends. What fraction of all of Sarah's photos is her friends? Support your answer with a model. Okay, so let's draw our model. And three sevenths of her photo are nature. One fourth of the rest are her friends. So of the rest, one fourth of the rest. So if we have it in sevenths, three of them are nature, so then I'm going to shade in the rest, which would be four sevenths, are her friends, and one fourth of the rest, so I'm going to split the rest into fourths, and shade in one fourth. So we get one, two, three, four pieces out of a total, if we counted all those up, we would have 28, and that's equal to one seventh. So one seventh of the fraction are of Sarah's friends. Number three, at Loretta's Bakery, three fifths of the baked goods are pies and the rest are cakes. One third of the pies are coconut, one sixth of the cakes are angel food. What fraction of all the baked goods at Loretta's Bakery are coconut pies? Okay, so there's our model. Three fifths of the baked goods are pies. So let's split it into fifths. So three fifths are pies. And we're talking coconut pies, so one third of the pies are coconut. So I'm going to split that into thirds. And shade in one third. So we have three overlapping out of the total 15, which is equal to one fifth. So one fifth of the pies are coconut. What fraction of all the baked goods at Loretta's Bakery are angel food cakes? So I'm going to split it into fifths again. But this time we're talking about a cake. And the rest are cakes. So three fifths, like we have shaded up here, those are the pies. The rest, two fifths, are cakes and one-sixth of those are angel food cakes. So I'm going to split this into sixths. And 
and shade in one of the sixths. So we have two pieces out of a total. So this part was shaded was split into sixths, this part is split into fifths. So total we have 30 pieces. And if I reduce that, 1 15th of the cakes are angel food cakes. Or 1 15th of all the baked goods, not just the cakes. Number four, Grandpa Mick opened a pint of ice cream. He gave his youngest grandchild one fifth of the ice cream and his middle grandchild one fourth of the remaining ice cream. Then he gave his oldest grandchild one third of the ice cream that was left after serving the others. Who got the most ice cream? How do you know? Draw a picture to support your reasoning. Okay, so let's start with the youngest grandchild. So the youngest grandchild got one-fifth. We just know that right away. Because he got one-fifth of the ice cream, so one-fifth of the whole. Now let's figure out the middle grandchild. Middle got one-fourth of the remaining. So if the... Um, Oh, the youngest got one-fifth of the ice cream. That means that there was four-fifths left. So right here, this part is what the youngest ate. Then the middle got one-fourth of the remaining. So let's split this into fourths. So he got one fourth of what was remaining, which would be one, two, three, four, out of a total 20 boxes. So that's equal to one fifth. So the middle also got one fifth of the pint. And he gave his oldest child one third that was left after serving the others. So now what's left is this part. So we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve twentieths. So there's twelve twentieths left now. And he, the oldest gets one third of that. So twelve twentieths is equal to, I'm going to reduce that. We can divide both twelve and twenty by four. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So there's 3 fifths left. So I'm going to shade in 3 fifths. And he gets 1 third of that. So now I'm going to split that into thirds. So he gets one, two, three out of 15, which is equal to one fifth. So they all get the same amount. I'll label this as the oldest so we know. What fraction of the pint of ice cream will be left if Grandpa Mick serves himself the same amount as the second grandchild? So the second grandchild got one-fifth because they all got one-fifth. So if the youngest is one-fifth and the middle is one-fifth and the oldest is one-fifth and Grandpa is one-fifth, then together they've all eaten four-fifths. And we want to know what fraction of the ice cream will be left after they've all eaten their ice cream. So if they eat four fifths, then that means that there will be one fifth left over. 